somebody and tell them, I am so glad you are here today. I am so glad you are here today. I am so glad you are here today.
Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal Lutheran. Holy faith, let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all these works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as a divine presence in our lives, 
times when the spirit of doubt or apprehension shows up at the door. Oh Lord, we know that you can handle everything we wish to put on you, that we do not need to bear our burdens alone. We ask that you give us the strength to lift our eyes up to the hills, to remember that our help comes from you. Oh gracious God, we ask that you fill our world with your love, with your peace, with your justice and equity. For it is good and righteous with those who love you when all of humanity can dwell together. When we can see that which unites us above that which separates us. Oh Lord, give us the strength to protect one another, to see one another, to hear one another's stories. Help us, Lord, each new day. And we ask these things as we remember those now who may be here in this room or may be out elsewhere in the world. We lift their names up to you, Lord. We lift up that which we give thanks for and that which causes us grief. And we know that over all of it, the healing balm of Gilead is flowing today as it has flowed every day since the dawn of your creation, O oh God. And so we join in that symphony and call out our prayers now. Lord, hear our prayers. 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 Lord, hear our prayers.
sir. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm breathing. I'm good. That's good, man. Good morning. Good morning.
with you. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the blessing of your anointing in this place, for all that you have provided for us, for the strength and courage that you give us every day. And Lord, we do ask that you will receive the offering that we now bring, make it worthy in your sight, multiply it, that your kingdom shall be multiplied here on earth as it is in heaven. All of these blessings in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and let all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.
church. Friends, I ask you to please be seated. In just a moment, we're going to do a responsive reading of our psalm for the day. It is going to be Psalm 121, but I do have a special guest that I'm going to invite, and it is Reverend Kevin Delaria from St. Francis in the Fields Episcopal Church in Malvern, Pennsylvania. And would you give him a nice big round of applause?
But the reality is that no matter where we find ourselves today, perhaps in the last week, or the last two, or the last five, or the last ten, or the last year, or the last ten years, it doesn't matter. All of us have found ourselves at some point in a place where we did not know where to look but up. Because when we are humble in such a way, and when we do not know how to control or manage whatever personal circumstance may be going at the time, we find ourselves on our back with nothing behind us except the ground, and we are forced to look up. Friends, we do not put our trust in our concern upon the lives of other people, we do not put our trust or our concerns upon the decisions that others make. We cast our cares upon the Lord because we are told that when everything goes wrong, that when we are struggling, I will raise my eyes to the hills and the help will come from the Lord. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell a neighbor, my help will not all come from you. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and tell a neighbor, you are helpful, but not that helpful. <laughs> because the reality is that there are things that only God can do. There are mountains that only God can move, and there are situations that only God can change. And it doesn't matter how much you may love the person next to you, and I pray that you do with strength, with glory, with peace, with compassion, may that be so. But there are times, friends, when we look to the hill. And love comes from the hills. It flows like a river where we do not know where it begins. It has the strength of a fountain where we don't know how it is fed. It has the power of running water and life-giving water even though we do not know how it gets there. But we know that it comes from the hill. Amen. Where do you find yourself today? Where have you found yourself before? And let me challenge you. If you have not yet struggled, keep on living. Living is not for the faint of heart. Whether you are struggling with what's going on around you, whether you are struggling with health issues, whether you are struggling with family dynamics that you don't know how to change, whether you are struggling with people behaving badly, whether you are struggling with your own feelings and sentiments about the things that you do and where you find yourself. Friends, turn to your neighbor and tell a neighbor, you will struggle, it's just a matter of time. So what do you do? What do you do? See, the psalmist, does not give us solutions. Because ultimately, here's the problem, friends, and, and by the way, we see this in the modern church, right? We want to go to church oftentimes so that somebody can tell us what's right and what's wrong, what to do, what not to do, so that we don't have to take responsibility for ourselves. Right? Because if 
somebody tells you what to do, right? When, when Christ says, well, well, why did you do it? Then you can say, well, the preacher told me. <laughs> or my friend told me. Or my spouse told me. Or my mother told me. Or my father told me. And on and on and on. And so the psalmist does not provide solutions. The psalm does not say, when things go wrong, step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten easy steps. The psalmist says, when things go wrong, when there are struggles, look up. To the hills. In other words, keep your gaze above the ground. Look into the higher and better things of God. Do not get caught up in the meaningless mire that life can oftentimes offer us, but look into the greater, better, kindlier things of God because love will come from the hills. And remind yourself, as all this says, that God is the creator of this whole thing, and that God is God no matter what. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, there is a God and you are not it. You, you know, that's that's I, I, I that's that's something that I wish I had like, I don't know, a thousand bumper stickers and just pass them out. There is a God and you are not it. Because we have the tendency to have the solution for everyone's problems except our own. But maybe it's not you, maybe it's just me. The psalmist says, there is a God who is the maker of heaven and earth and everything in between and everyone in between. And that there is a God who will not fall asleep on the job. That there is a God who does not slumber but cares for God's children. That there is a God who will protect you when you need to be shielded. That there is a God who will give you strength when you are weak. That there is a God who will provide cool in the warmth of day so that you do not burn up with anger. But instead you are confident in strength. Because when we're angry about our circumstances, when we are angry about our circumstances, we burn up like dry grass on a field. And God says, I will shield you from the heat of the day so that your anger doesn't burn in you, and that your anger may turn into strength, and your certainty into assurance. And the moon will not hurt you at night, but simply give you light, that you may see where you are going. In your journeys, I will be with you. And the psalmist says, and I will be with you forever and ever. And let me add this in. I am with you, guarding and watching your going and coming forever and ever, whether you like it or not. Because God says, I am still God. So where do you find yourself today? Where have you found yourself in days before? And where will you find yourself tomorrow? The argument comes to us from the unknown. In that we don't know the certainty of what may happen. In that we may not understand the twists and turns of life. In that we do not fully see when we will receive.
receive a phone call that is to our dislike. In that we will never understand the why. And by the way, oftentimes, friends, the why belongs to God. And that there will be times when we will be confused and uncertain. And yet, there is a hill. And yet, there is a hill. And yet, there is a high place. And yet, there is a place on earth where we can be lifted up. And, and by the way, friends, I don't know if you noticed it, but when you came into Rundell Hall, we we're actually on a hill. All right? And when I say that love comes from the hill, that's exactly what I mean. It goes out that door. And it goes into our communities, and it goes into our area, and it goes into our town, and it goes into our families, because there is a hill where love was shown to be stronger than hate, and there is a hill where strength was shown in humility and weakness, and there is a hill where the Son of God, who we know as Christ, was not just crucified, but actually lifted up. Amen. That we may behold him in the glory of his holiness and in the holiness of his beauty. Because love comes from the hill. Lord, I will lift my eyes to the hill. That's where my help comes from. From God, who is the creator of heaven and earth. And let all God's people say, Amen. 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 As we close today, I want you to know that the pastors are always available to you. We'll be around the room if you desire a moment of prayer, a moment of blessing with one of us. We would be delighted to offer that to you. If you have a sense of uncertainty about the days ahead, let us know that we may pray for strength and for assurance into your future. Friends, Wherever your heart may be today, God will meet you there. And remember, if we are willing, God is faithful. Let's stand and let us sing.
to one another and to the Lord, to come before the Lord with thanksgiving. And after church at 4 o'clock, we are renting out J&J &J Speedway for go-karts for everyone. We hope you'll invite your family, your friends, people you've never seen before. Just say, do you like go-karts? Because it's a scene, a resurrection. The, the track can't afford to be open all the time anymore. So it's sort of a special thing for us to get it up and running. If you know anyone who might like to have a chance to go on go-karts in Beitam, this is their day. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, my help comes from the hills. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, my help comes from the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and tell the neighbor, love comes from above. Love comes from above. Friends, would you please stand and join me in our closing blessing? And so I say unto you, beloved, Jesus said, love each other as I have loved you. And so therefore, beloved, love boldly, love deeply, love benignly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and let all of God's people say, Amen. 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 Amen.